Um, now let's look at the range. Let's see. The range is how far it goes. How far is it going to get? Well, once you have the hang time, uh, this one isn't so bad. All right, so for the hang time, for the range, what, first of all, what dimension do we care about for the range? How far it gets is x. So it's probably going to be an x kinematics problem. So you could say, oh, I know all x kinematics have to follow this, plus v i x t plus 1 half a x t squared. If you want a position, it's probably this equation. OK. Is it accelerating in the x? No, there's no gravity in the x. So this term's 0. So it's really uniform motion. And that's the equation for uniform motion, right? This is d equals vt. Um, if this is the origin, oh, whoops, I don't know. If that's the origin, what is x initial? 0, right? So that's 0. We don't need that. So we see all we've got to really do is multiply the x component of the velocity times the time, the hang time. Right? It's moving at the same x component the whole time it's in the air to the whole hang time. So really, then, the range is x final equals um, what was the x component? It's uh, v naught cosine theta. Right? So here, this is v naught cosine theta naught. And then t was 2 v naught sine theta naught over g. 2 v naught sine theta naught over g. All right? What is this talking about? Okay. So now we just uh, combine those. I want to get this wrong. Yes, of course. Then you combine these to get the range. So x final is the range because we started at 0. So you can call it big R if you want. Is 2 v, v naught squared uh, sine theta naught, cosine theta naught, all over g. And that's the one you use to figure out how far it's going to go. Okay. Yes, there will be a formula sheet on the R exam. So you don't have to memorize these. You could memorize them, though, because there's no formula sheet on the MCAT. So. But you can see they all look similar. They're hard to memorize. You may also see this simpler because they use an identity to turn this into sine 2 theta, I think. There's some identity, sine times cosine is sine 2x or something. I don't memorize identities. OK. And then the third one is the height. How high did it get? Here we go. All right, how high? Height. So you're reading a problem, and it says get the height. And you say, let's see, is that x kinematics or y kinematics? As y kinematics, right? And here we're using the uh, formula acceleration for a distance. That is the kinematics formula that we derive from the other two. Remember, the standard ones, this one, is a good one when you have acceleration for a time. And this is a good one when you have acceleration for a time. If you have acceleration for a distance, we showed you if you combine two of them, you can get this other one, the famous vf squared equals v initial squared plus 2a times delta x, or delta y, or we'll just call it d. In this case, it'll be a delta y because it's height. And we can do that because we're asked, what's the distance? How high did it get? Well, we know what's going to happen. It's going to go from its initial vy0 to 0 equals 2 times we know the acceleration, and then we know how high it's going to get. So final is 0. When it goes to the top, that's 0. V initial, in this case, is viy which we already know is v naught sine theta naught, but it's squared, v naught squared sine squared theta naught, right. plus 2, negative 9.8 is the acceleration, and then d is really the height we're looking for. Right. It's d, the displacement, it's y minus y naught, but y naught is 0, so it's really just it's the height. I'll put yh. How high did it get? Okay. Where did you get cosine from in the range equation? The cosine is the x component. V i x is v naught cosine theta naught. So if this is the v naught vector, the x component is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's v naught x cosine theta. Um, oh my goodness. Stop talking about the MCAT, please. Okay. 
I took it this summer, uh, you know, the physics part. Uh, why do we ignore the y component? This is a good question. It's an excellent question. Why do we ignore the y component when finding the range? Doesn't gravity affect how far it goes until it lands? Okay. So I am oversimplifying how you do these. I'm saying, we're getting the range. Only think about the x component. Okay, that's not really completely true. You write a kinematics equation for the x component, but you may be plugging things in that you got from the y component. So it is true that the two motions depend on each other. We have to use information from one to solve the problem for the other. I'm just saying to know how to get started, what equation do I even write down? It'd be an x equation. But you're right, the y depended on, or I'm sorry, the time depended on the y motion. So you're correct. Yes, I think I'm more or less caught up here. Okay. Um, we just got to finish this now. So uh, bring this over here. That's negative over there. Turn it around. What do we get? I don't know. Let's see. I'll just read it off my notes. No, no, let me do the algebra. Let's see. The height, yh, is uh, v naught squared sine squared theta naught over 2g. I think I can do that without my notes. All right. So there's the range for the height. I'm sorry. 2g. So those are the three sort of basic fundamental equations. Um, for a, an even trajectory, a uniform, starts at one height, ends at the same height. Okay, Those are the equations. So we might give you, I think the homework has a problem on that, a uniform trajectory. Um, but of course we'll give you uneven trajectories because it's more challenging and you've got to really understand it better. Okay, Let's see how we're doing, 47.